right? So today for the author's spotlight, we will be discussing um, the latest book called The Mass of Masculinity, How Men Can Reclaim Their Identity, Lead, and Love with Vulnerability. This book is so amazing. I've been reading it. I'm loving it. And it's by Dr. Eddie Connor Jr. Some of you know him from, you know, a lot of the posts that's in the group. You guys be loving his posts. And I had him on, I believe last year, um, he was, he helped me with um, driving your singleness. He was a guest and you guys told me that you enjoyed that as well. So at this time, feel free to share. Tell us what state, what country. I know we have many people who will be watching later um, from different parts of the world. So uh, welcome to our um, people who are watching the replay. So hello to my replay viewers. And feel free to comment, even if you get on at three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> please comment and tell us where you are from. So I have a very special guest all the way from Detroit, Michigan. He is a best-selling author of many books, over, I think, 10 books, more than 10 books. Am I correct? <laughs> he yeah, has a lot yeah. of books. Yeah. Yes. He's an international speaker. He has, you know, did a lot of um, uh, speaking engagements all over the world, Jamaica, all over. He's a minister. and He's the founder of Dr. Eddie Connor Academy. So welcome, Dr. Eddie Connor, to the broadcast. What up, though? <laughs> what, oh, boy. What up, though? 313 represent. Yes. What's good? Glad to be with you tonight. Yes. Um, and and you, do, you do such great work empowering people, especially the singles who pray. I mean, uh, the kingdom and the community. Uh, yes. I love what you're doing, and so many people are empowered and impacted by your work. So. We salute and celebrate you as a as a queen in the kingdom of God. You, yes. uh, you, you're, you're a queen who's quintessentially unique, empowering everyone naturally. So, we celebrate you. Awesome, thank you. And I don't think I ever meant this, mentioned this to you before. When I first gave my life back to Christ, about I believe ten years ago, eleven years ago, you were one of the people that I followed, like from Twitter and Facebook. You're you know, consistency of your posts helped me on my journey. I don't think I ever told you that. I know wow. we're friends for a while, but I never mentioned that to you. Wow. Ten that's years a, ago. A, that's wow. That's that's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> I think that's my amazing. sister she put know. me on to you know your posts, and then I was like, oh, he's so good. And then you always will post, you know, all the time. I'm like, wow. And then later on, we connected. So. You have been consistent and God is um, truly using you for his glory. So we are excited for tonight. So I'm just going to start off. As you guys come in, I'm seeing the numbers go up. Feel free to share, share, share. We are on. Welcome to everyone who is tuning in. I'm so sorry I can't display the comments at this time. Mm -hmm. There's an issue, but we will see your comments on Facebook. So remember to comment and tell us where you are from. So at this time... Um, you can just introduce yourself, um, Dr. Eddie Connor, and give a fun fact about yourself. Yeah, um, I mean, you you mentioned a lot. Um, you know, I'm a son of the city of Detroit, uh, by way of Kingston, Jamaica. Grew up in in Jamaica for part of my life, so that might be somewhat of a fun fact. Um, little Jamaican accent back in the day, Kingston represent. So. Um, I know you're in New York. A lot of my father's side of the family moved over to New York, coming from the islands as well. So I uh, used to play violin as a kid and was in the Detroit Symphony Orchestra. It was kind of a, somewhat of a, a prodigy, but I uh, put the put the violin down and, and, and picked up a, a basketball and ultimately a pen as I have uh, written 14 books now. So, you know, I, I speak around a lot and empower people just to overcome obstacles. Um, I'm really, really uh, intent on our online academy that we've been building called the Eagles Academy, uh, empowering individuals to soar into success and purpose, purpose to profit, ideas to income, context to contracts, developing your faith, identity, relationships, speaker training, so much more. So uh, that's that's been the draw for me lately. Awesome. Awesome. They didn't know that. Fun fact about, yeah. you know, the violin. I would never have thought that. So thank you so much for that. And as you guys yeah. come in, feel free to share 
we are discussing a great topic on today. So that goes right into my next question. What was, could you, you have written many books and you know, there's a lot of empowerment books that you have written. So what made you write this book? What was the inspiration behind your new book? Yeah, you know, um, the inspiration behind my new book and we, we might as well show it, show and tell a little visual aid here. Uh, the, the inspiration behind the book really just comes from the fact that, you know, being a man is hard work, but it's but it's hard work. And I think the hard work comes when we we recognize and realize that vulnerability is not strength. Vulnerability is weakness. Uh, oftentimes, men, we don't verbalize, we internalize. And oftentimes, vulnerability and masculinity cannot coexist in the same space because society is oftentimes deemed vulnerability in masculinity as femininity. When really it's not about being masculine or feminine, it's being human. That's the whole aspect of what vulnerability is. It's not idiosyncratic to any particular gender. It's just the fact that it is a human aspect. And, and I think the hard work comes from the fact that when we take off our mask, we can we can heal from the pain of our past. It, it, like the uh, uh, subscript of the book suggests, how men can reclaim their identity, lead and love of vulnerability also embracing their humanity. And I think even as I said, you know, the uh, being a man is hard work, but it's hard work. The hard work is in healing from intergenerational trauma. It's in healing from the psychological pain, from the emotional incarceration. And so really this book is written as a clarion call to champion men to live beyond the caricature and really embrace their true character. Real man is, is not about what he has, but who he is. Uh, I, I like to say we're more like Clark Kent than Superman. Uh, we're more like uh, David Banner than the Hulk. We're more like uh, T'Challa than Black Panther. And so uh, taking off the mask and the cape to give voice to our emotions, uh, the struggles of what it is that we go through, our, our superpower is what makes us superheroes through that lens of vulnerability. And so uh, I really wrote this book to, uh, you know, the, the, the color purple said all my life I had to fight. And I think all my life I had to write. I was working to write uh, this particular book that really uh, empowers readers to address the fears, the failures, the frustrations, uh, the father wounds, and even the fights internally uh, that we have as men and how to heal from what we deal with. Awesome, awesome, love, love it, love it. And I believe that this book is going to help so many people, men and women. And I love that you're highlighting this, um, you know, vulnerability that men are so scared to sh to show because society. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to go. I'm going before my questions, <laughs> but I just love the whole concept behind this book. So this brings me to my next question. Um, so emotional trauma is something that many people don't like to talk about. It makes us feel like something is wrong with us. And, you know, through, you know, studies, certain behaviors are tied um, to emotional trauma, like fear, anxiety, anger, panic attacks, detachment, depression, sh and shame. And, you know, in the church world, we try to shout over everything. And of course, prayer is we have to pray. But sometimes we just need to sit with a therapist to get to the root of the problem. And years ago, I was the first person in my family to go to therapy, and it was the best decision in my life. So um, as I coach clients, I always, you know, tell them if I feel like I hear something that may, um, you know, like they, they need to go to therapy. I try to encourage them to go to therapy. You can, you know, go to therapy and have Jesus. Come on now. So what... <laughs> Hello. <laughs> we can right. do both because um, sometimes we just got to sometimes we can't say everything to, you know, our family members, people in our life. We can't always tell them everything. So why not sit with a counselor? It could be a Christian counselor, therapist and talk about what's really, you know, deep rooted stuff that we can't tell any anyone. So <clears throat> one of my favorite um, therapists right now is Dr. Nicole LaPera, she focused a lot on trauma. And I came across um, a tweet that she posted today, which is crazy. It said, trauma re um, reveals itself in relationships by pushing people away when they get too close, assuming everyone has negative attentions. 
um, unconsciously sabotaging relationships and staying with partners who are hurtful and harmful. So yeah. tell us, Dr. Eddie, what are some ways um, a person, what are different ways someone can get over their emotional trauma? Yeah, that, that's a powerful uh, perspective that you, you're lending and, and even putting uh, it under the, the microscopic lens to, to kind of examine. Uh, Dr. Joy DeRoy, uh, in her book, Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome, she talked about the, the generational trauma that we carry in our DNA. Um, essentially, it's combustible. It's, it's TNT. It's, it's TNT being trauma and triggers. Uh, and I believe there's, there's nothing wrong with, with Jesus. Uh, what's the matter with Jesus? He's all right. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with Jesus and the therapist. Uh, if you even think about it, scripture it says, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Uh, and so adequate counseling is good for our mind, it's good for our soul, it's good for our spirit. Another step is literally in admitting that you have an issue. Would you go to Alcoholics Anonymous. What do they say? The first, I don't know if it's 10 steps, 12 steps, whatever st steps it is. First, admitting that you have an issue. Uh, if you keep saying the word issues, you'll eventually slip up and say, it's you issues 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 it's you and we see we don't like to to do that we don't like to talk about that we don't like to expose that we don't like to unveil that because we like to dress up our mess you know smiling on the outside but suffering in silence on the inside and i i'd like to say avoidance is not an anesthetic to numb you to your pain uh, you can't point the finger at other people and, and literally just play the game blame game going through life like that uh, and it calls into question these questions. How can you heal from what you won't deal with? How can you address what you refuse to confess? How can you fight what you won't face? And until we remove the mask of our trauma, here's what we're going to do. Adversely, we're going to bleed on people who didn't cut us. Because hurting people hurt people, but heal people will heal people. Uh, and, and it's quite interesting if you think about it, because mental health has been uh, under the microscope. We, we don't even need to talk about Adidas and Yeezy. <laughs> we can look at mental health being under the microscope. Uh, but you can't spell mental health without men heal. Our mental health is our true wealth. The, the core of sound uh, mental health transpires when, when men heal. And I think we have to be. Uh, emotionally intelligent enough to admit that we have an issue. We have to be emotionally intelligent enough to to engage in the process of inner healing, of loving ourselves and knowing our worth, of walking in wholeness. And here it is. Wholeness is not solely for women. Wholeness is for us as men too. And an emotionally, an emotionally immature man is a danger to himself and others in the process. And so um, I, I think when we uh, when we begin to remove that mask, when we begin to heal from our past, when we begin to focus not just on our brawn, but our brain, not just our muscles, but our mind, uh, not just on our rage, but our stage of uh, maturity, uh, we'll understand that real masculinity challenges you to redirect that energy from confrontation into communication. Because here it is. Let me let me pile this on you, Miss Pyle. <laughs> Every day will be like Halloween for you until you take off the mask and address the fears, the failures, the father wounds, the mother wounds, the frustrations that are staring you in your face. You are freeing us. And we just started. <laughs> like, listen, you just You, you, you done mouth. stirred it up. You done stirred us up. So. <laughs> Gotta stir it. Uh, this is so good. We're just starting. Guys, as you come in, I see some new people coming in. This is Author Spotlight with Dr. Eddie Connor. We are discussing his new book, The Mass of Masculinity. And we are just trying to, you know, speak about a topic that we don't often hear in the churches or just in the Black community. But we are opening the floor today to discuss many things that some men or even women go through. So, this brings me to my next question. Um, so sometimes, you know, in society, if a man, he cries or show any emotion, that is considered a weak 
or fe uh, feminine trait. And um, just, you know, in society and, you know, movies, whatever, everyone, when you cry, is they think that's, uh, when a man cries, excuse me, that's a sign of weakness. And that's has, how it has been um, over the years. And, you know, I grew up with um, having my dad in the household and I never really saw him cry. It wasn't because he didn't want to cry. I just never saw him cry. I would see him cry during worship in church. That's the only time I really saw him cry. Even both of my grandparents, my grandfathers, I never really saw them cry, um, mm. you know, publicly or I just never saw them cry. So I grew up um, seeing, not seeing men cry. So if I had a boyfriend and he cried, I was like, oh no, this is not, you know, I mean, this is my younger years, guys. Don't judge me. <laughs> if oh, I yeah, saw yeah. him cry, I'd be like, tell, tell the truth, shame the devil. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'd be like, listen, like, no, seriously, like, there was one boyfriend, like, he really, like, break down and cried it from me. And I was like, whoa, this is too much. And I was just like, you know, I had to, like, sit back and, you know, look at things differently. Um, because there's nothing wrong with showing emotion. Yeah. So how can masculinity and vulnerability coexist in the same place? You know, here's one thing I had to learn is that uh, there's victory in your vulnerability. But when we were growing up, especially as boys becoming men, we always thought it was taking an L. You soft, you weak, you a punk. Uh, e even the song uh, Khalil by Boys to Men, it brings the, the song uh, the Interlude, uh, brings to mind and said, no one to guide me. I'm all alone. I'm all alone. I need shelter from the rain to ease the pain of changing from boys to men. And, and this is what we deal with. This is what we go through. And oftentimes uh, don't even mature through because ever since we were boys, they told us don't cry, man up, don't express yourself. And as a result, we don't know how to tap into as Bishop T. Jakes would say our emotions. As a consequence, because we've been so socialized to never verbalize, but internalize, by the time we get to you, we don't communicate, much less express ourselves because of how we have been socialized. And as I said before, vulnerability is not weakness, it's strength. We have trained boys to run away from emotions and see emotions as weakness. When you even hear the quote, uh, they credited a lot to Frederick Douglass who said, uh, if we build strong boys, we won't have to repair broken men. But oftentimes us as men are broken because of how we have been raised, how we have been socialized. As Dr. Sigmund Freud said, we are in adulthood what we have experienced in childhood. And until we unlearn what we have already relearned, uh, we have to unlearn what we have learned. We have to retrain our brain and restore our heart. Um, many times the, the anger and even the anxiety of what it is that we have gone through, we've only been allowed to express any form of of emotion, which is anger. That's the only emotion we've been allowed to express. But ang anger is just one letter away from danger. And so getting from that place of uh, dealing with our emotions, understanding that emotion is not weakness, but be also being able to control our emotions. Uh, uncontrolled emotions will wreck your life. And, and being able to uh, grapple with the sadness, the fear, the loneliness, the anxiety, uh, the depression, uh, the thoughts that are deleterious to our destiny with mentors, right? A lot of times we think of mentorship being just from boys to men, men teaching boys. You can't spell mentors without men. Men need mentors. How you are at 20 is not how you are at 30. How you are at 40 is not how you are at 30, so on and so on. You need other brothers who have already been where you're trying to go to let you know this is what you can look for up ahead. Avoid this detour to destruction. Life teaches you in two ways, mistakes and mentors. It's best to learn from the mistake of a mentor than to bump your head and make the same mistake. That is so good. Men need mentors. Who You have to be accountable. That's another thing. Absolutely. Accountability. I'm always asking whoever is interested in me, who is your mentor? Who is your pastor? Who are you accountable to? Because yeah. that's important. I just love that because we need 
to have mentors. We need to have accountability in this season in order to get to where God is calling us to be. I just love that. Guys, as you come in, I got some messages. There's a problem with comments right now. So just try to comment in the comment section. Some people may not be able to. There's just, I can't display the comments at this time, but feel free to like, share, share, share at this time. This is off the spotlight. We have Dr. Eddie Connor Jr. He is discussing his new book and it's so, so, so good guys. So I want you yeah, guys to continue to, yes, the mask of masculinity. This is new book. He has it right there. Put it back up. Yeah. There it <laughs> yes, is. that's his new book. Amazon, yeah. Audible, iTunes, yes. Barnes and Noble, wherever you get it. Get it, get it. I'm going to display the where you can buy the book. I know you guys are loving everything that you are hearing right now. So stay tuned. We're going to go deeper and deeper. <laughs> so sometimes um, as women, we find it hard to really understand men uh, from experience talking to men in my life, uh, whether it's father or, um, you know, male figures or just even, you know, friends, male friends. Um, a lot of men, they want to be respected, honored, and they want women to understand them. And sometimes they're like, uh, romantic relationships or even it could be a platonic relationship or a mother to son relationship or even a sister to brother or husband to wife. Sometimes it's hard for men to open up to the women in their life. So mm -hmm. how can women create safe spaces for men to be vulnerable? Oh, that's a deep question there. Um, you know, when you think about the needs of a man versus the needs of a woman, you know, his needs, her needs, uh, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Uh, <laughs> uh, the content in, in books like that. Um, our needs are, are different. And just because we're different doesn't mean we're deficient. Um, each joint supplier. And when you think about it as men, two of our main relational needs is that we desire uh, admiration and respect. Uh, we need to be reminded of the champion that is within us. Whether we say it or not, we need to be reminded of it. Uh, because after Superman is done flying around, uh, we need a soft, safe space and place to land. Uh, we need recreational companionship. Um, as men, we have a desire to, yes, be involved in challenging activities, some form of recreational hobby, uh, but it's even more enjoyable when the woman in our life or the significant other in our life that, that God has placed in our life takes interest in what we like to do. Um, as a man, we also need our space. We often need time to ourselves. Uh, think about it. Why, why do you think so many men have man caves? Uh, it is designated to provide a safe space for serenity and solitude. And sometimes a man cave is not just a place in a basement. It's a place in his mindset. Um, true peace is priceless. Because as men, we, we simply need time to think. Um, we got to have that time to strategize for our plans, our goals, our business pursuits, our, our family. Uh, and you think about it. I talk about admiration and respect a little bit and community, uh, recreational companionship. But notice I said nothing about love. Uh, it's not that we don't need love, but our primary need is respect. One of a woman's main primary needs is affection, attention wrapped in love. That's not necessarily one of our primary needs. We internalize love now through respect, which is shown you know, in that whole dynamic. Uh, because at our core, we desire friendship, we desire praise, we desire peace, uh, we desire community, we desire connection. And I think it boils down to, when you're talking about women creating a safe space and place for a man to be vulnerable, it boils down to a woman's attitude and disposition. I know y'all don't like me now. <laughs> Here's the question. Are you a headache or a helpmate? Are you a refuge for a man to run to or an emergency exit for him to escape from? I know y'all don't like me now. You want, you, want, you want Danny to shut the whole thing down. But here's the question. Can you hear his heart and allow him to take off his Superman cape without judgment? Because in every man is a lion and a lamb. 
and every man is a kid and a king. And every man is Clark Kent and Superman. And every man is a caricature and character, is a lover and a fighter. A man, here it is, is like a boxer. He doesn't want to have to fight in the ring and in the corner too. A man knows, I know, when I step out in the ring, I'm going to get hit. When I step out in the world, when I get on the corner, when I know somebody's probably going to call me uh, something negative because they see my skin as a sin, right? But I know that when I go back into the corner, I shouldn't be getting hit. I'm Muhammad Ali. I need a bandini. I need somebody to bandage me up. I need somebody to to uh, put the salve on my wounds. I need you to talk to me. Let me know that I'm a champion. The corner is the home. The corner represents uh, me talking to you on the phone. Is that his refuge? Are you punching at him or are you celebrating him? Can you encourage the man? Can you speak to the champion in him? Can you uh, speak life into his life? Can you uplift him when the world, the weight of the world is on his shoulders? Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Can you lift him up? Can you call him a king? Can you call him a king and a champion when it looks like he's losing in life? Now that's a safe space and place for him to land and for him to take off his cape. Are wow. you a headache or a helpmate? <laughs> are you a are, headache? Are, are you a refuge? <laughs> are you a, an emergency exit? Listen, to people? Uh, Which one is it? That, Which one that is it? part so powerful like i hope you ladies because i get so many questions from my you know single who pray family the ladies you know have a big um you know community of women so i hope you guys are taking notes you know seeing how we could be safe spaces to the men in our life whether that's romantically if that's people you know the men in your life you have brothers you have fathers you have grandparents you know grandfathers how can we be safe spaces for the men in our life. And back to romantic relationships, because you know you guys love to talk about relationships here. <laughs> uh, Are you a headache or a helpmate? Wow, powerful, powerful. Commercial it's break. It's tight, but it's right. <laughs> right? <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, y'all know we keep it real on my you know, broadcast. This is, this is real. Sometimes you have to look at yourself and say, am I a headache? or help me. And if you're being a headache, today is the day you can turn the tables around. We're giving you an All ad right. deal. We're giving you a Tylenol <laughs> PM. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> so you can turn it around, okay? <laughs> so this brings me to, as you guys come in, shout out to my replay viewers. This is Author Spotlight with Dr. Eddie Connor Jr. He's discussing his new book, The Mass of Masculinity. And we are just diving deep and discussing his new book, but also um, highlighting different issues that we can overcome in this season. So this brings me to my next question. You have a whole chapter on marriage. And I will read a piece from this chapter because I absolutely love the whole chapter. I love the whole book, but I love this um, chapter as well. And you said, who is preparing and teaching our boys and men how to become husbands? We do a great job preparing women to be virtuous wives. However, who is teaching us to be faithful husbands? Are we preparing women to marry men who aren't prepared for marriage? Wow. Mm. This spoke volumes to me because sometimes we do have a narrative in church or just in society that is directed towards women. What we should do, what we, sh what we should be. If we don't do this, we will miss out on marriage. If we don't act this way. Um, and, you know, women, we are the ones that are always going to conferences. We're always going to therapy. We're always doing everything to become the, the wife or the, the person that we're supposed to be. And um, sometimes, you know, men are not always, th that is not always directed towards men. So I want mm -hmm. you to um, discuss a little bit about that chapter, Marriage Minded Man. How should men prepare them themselves to be godly husbands? Yeah, the, the boy, uh, fiery questions tonight. Um, you know, we, we, uh, expostulate and really talk bullyingly about 
Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6. Uh, Proverbs chapter 30, verse, 31, verse 10, rather, uh, says, who can find a, a virtuous woman for her pri price is far above rubies. So we talk about Proverbs 31, verse 10, but we don't have much conversation, if at all, about Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6, who says, which says, who can find a faithful man? Now, now I'm more English than math, but 20 comes before 31. And so uh, Proverbs chapter 20, verse six precedes who can find a faithful man, precedes who can find a virtuous woman. And I think we're in a, a space and place of the fact that brothers want sisters to be virtuous, but sisters want brothers to be faithful. And we are living in times where people are asking the prefix for both of those questions, who can find? We had this, the, the singer songwriter, gospel singer, Sean Mitchell in here. I'd, I'd have him render us an A selection. S searched all over, couldn't find nobody. Looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Right? And, and so becoming the right one for the right one first begins with you being right for yourself. One thing that our feet are not necessarily held to the fire for us as men, um, and when you see the statistics suggest that uh, Communication, money, and sex, top three indicators for divorce. When you hear a statistic that suggests that 70 to possibly 80% of divorces are filed by women, uh, men are lost in the sauce oftentimes, how men are even portrayed on sitcoms and on TV and, and on, on Netflix, and, and how, how they just have no clue of what it is they are. They're just being led by women and they don't have any leadership. You can't be a, you can't lead her if you're not a leader. And here's the question. Are you the priest of your home first before you can be the priest of the wife in your life? Are you a provider? Do you protect your loved ones? If you think about this in Genesis chapter two, God gave man work before he gave him a woman. Adam walked with God in the cool of the day. Adam had four things in place before he was ever uh, given a woman. That is, Adam had a place. Uh, Adam had purpose. Adam had presence. Adam, had, Adam also had power. You need to have your own place as a man, and then you also need to know your place as a man. Uh, you gotta know what your purpose is. A job is what you're paid for, but your purpose is what you're made for. Uh, you got to have presence. That's not just presence to where you jeet up from the feet up to where you pull up to the scene with your ceiling missing. No, you got to have the presence of God. And then also God gave Adam power. It was not power to dominate a woman. It was power to dominate his space. It was power for him to have dominion over the place of his purpose, not to subdue anybody else. Here it is. It's God who said it is not good for man to be alone. Adam never said it uh, because the woman was, was a gift. The woman was not a requirement. And uh, are you in such a place in your life uh, as a man to where God can say, it's not good for you to be alone? You've 10 you've x your purpose. You've maximized it. You are moving by yourself, but you'll be a force when you and her are together. She makes you better. Right? Uh, because if not, it is good for you to be alone, right? It, it, because before I say I do to you, I have to first say I do to the purpose that God gave me to do. I have to partner with my purpose before I seek a purpose partner. And so I think it is leadership. I think it is vision. I think it's emotional intelligence. I think it's vulnerability, a prayer life with a relationship with Christ, of course, are just a few prerequisites. And let's not forget, and I'm sure the sisters are going to shout and kick off their Louboutin heels when I say this one. Let's not forget, romance without finance will always be a nuisance. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. You just said, listen, <laughs> I am speechless. <laughs> Listen, before you say I before I say I do to you, I have to say I do to my purpose.
And that is so deep. And I hope someone is hearing that right now. Maybe you are so focused on getting into a relationship. God is asking you to say yes to his will, say yes to your purpose, Mm -hmm. and he will send you your purpose partner. So I don't know who that is for. We, God is speaking prophetically (laughs) on today through Dr. Eddie Connor. And I know that is for someone out there. Before you say I do, make sure you are saying um, yes to, I do to purpose. Wow, such a blessing. Now the comments are up. So you guys could comment. I think you can only comment on my page. So if you're in a group, I'm so sorry. I don't think the comments are able. I'm not able to post the comments from the private group, but feel free to come to my personal page and um, write a comment and I would display it. So thank you guys for commenting. Continue to comment. Tell us where you are from. Feel free right now to comment in the chat what state you're um, viewing from, what country. So I know we have a lot of international viewers in our group and a part of the family. So we are going um, going to keep going. And we this okay. is author spotlight. So um, the next question. So we're going back to relationships. <laughs> um, back to relationships. So many times um, people are, are unable to pinpoint whether um, the person that they are interested in is un, is emotionally unavailable. Or maybe you've been getting to know this person for some time, or you can, you are in a relationship with this person and you want to you know get to know them deeper, but there's like a block, blockage there. You're not able to really get to know them deeper. And sometimes it may be that that person is emotionally unavailable. So what are some indications that point to someone who is who may be emotional emotionally unavailable yeah um i think one of the hardest things for us to do as men uh, is to admit our faults and our shortcomings uh we we try to cover our mishaps and mistakes uh, with ego with pride with machismo with uh, the I'm a man, <laughs> so listen to what I'm saying. Uh, with with all that bravado, and uh, I was watching our first take on ESPN, and Michael Irvin said, uh, "Bravado is nothing but false pride." As a matter of fact, he said it's false courage. Uh, it is uh, the veneer that we wear uh, when we're really hiding the fear that's on the inside of us. Right? And so, rather than uh, uh, deflect our our, our behavior and, and blame shift, we must admit uh, and really change our actions. I think it is a emotionally intelligent and emotionally available men are not threatened by uh, the power of love. Rather than shun it, they embrace it. They embrace the power of love and vulnerability uh, because love represents vulnerability. Vulnerability represents love. Um, you know, I think you have to ask certain questions such as, is this person emotionally intelligent? Are they emotionally a- available enough to express the depth of who they are beyond, here it is, just sex, silence, a sandwich, and an ego stroke? <laughs> there's there's more to a man than just that. Uh, who are his mentors? Um, as I said before, men need mentors. Has, has he gone to counseling? Has he gone to therapy? Uh, is he willing to have hard conversations, even if you all don't see eye to eye? Can you have a disagreement without being disagreeable? Um, is he willing to right his wrongs because he understands that there is no respectability without responsibility? And I think that, uh, is not necessarily the panacea for um uh being emotionally unavailable however it it af- it it begins to open up the vault door to where you're now able to crack the code and really see uh into the mind of the man and really uh, recognize that and then he wants you to see who he is too because intimacy is more than just two bodies connecting into me see you're allowing somebody to see into you, not to just get information, 
but to get revelation for your current situation. Thank you for that. That was so, yeah. such good information. And we don't talk enough about being emotionally intelligent. And, right. you know, cause sometimes we just go off of our emotions. We just, you know, sometimes we act out in relationships by, you know, not really thinking clearly or just, you know, just taking time just not to get so upset about certain things. So emotional intelligence is really important, you know, as you grow into the person you are called to be. So that, thank you so much for that, um, Dr. Eddie. So uh, my next question, because this goes right into my next question. So, cause we're always, you know, we're talking about vulnerability. So what are some issues and, you know, you're, you are a man and what are some, and you could probably talk about from your own experience, what are some issues that men face that prevent them from being open and vulnerable? Um, you know, um, as I, I said before, the, that quote by Dr. Sigmund Floyd, we are an adult who we have experience in childhood. Uh, and what we do is we train boys and men to act out their feelings. However, that which you don't talk about, you act out. Um, and that's why you see more criminal behavior in men. You see more shootings in men. Uh, you see more bar fights and domestic violence in us as men, because we train men not to talk about what is going on inside of them. Um, as a consequence, that pain is passed on to others because of unaddressed trauma. Um, oftentimes we refuse to be vulnerable. We, we refuse to be vulnerable because uh, we know how emotionally fragile we are as men. Uh, it's easy for us to run from our emotion because it causes us to analyze our old wounds uh, rather than express our vulnerability. The human experience as a man is, is about more than being stoic and strong. It's about embracing the fragility of our vulnerability. And oftentimes as men, what we do is we fear emotional intimacy because oftentimes we are emotionally incarcerated by unresolved trauma. And what emotional uh, intimacy does is uh, it exposes the ugly of who we are internally. It, it, it unmasks uh, our strength and it, what it does is it reveals our struggle. It doesn't just shed light on the good, it sheds light on the bad and the ugly too. And so we'll, we'll never be ready for emotional intimacy until we're free interpersonally. As I said before, there's a kid in every king. There's sometimes a broken boy in every man. If we don't heal, we're going to bleed on people who didn't cut us. And I believe man means, as I wrote about in the book, man means to manage, man means to maintain, man means to manifest your destiny by using God's manual because you have a mandate. Um, think about this. If you notice uh, in scripture, the scripture, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. This particular uh, scripture is in the love chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Y'all are very familiar with it. Love is patient. Love is kind. And, and here's the thing. If I can't substitute my name or the other person's name for love, am I or they really a person of love? Because the scripture now becomes a mirror. And here's the thing. It seems as if the Apostle Paul in this particular text is just throwing this scripture about men in the chapter. It doesn't seem like it fits at all. It doesn't seem like it fits into the context of what, he, what he's writing about. Or here's the question, does it? Simply because love requires vulnerability, but vulnerability is rooted in maturity. You can't have real maturity and masculinity without vulnerability. One of the hardest things we struggle with as men is in being vulnerable. Certain habits are not just going to leave for us as men. We have to be diligent enough to put it away. Uh, it may hurt to give it up, but you're going to see true healing if you're courageous enough to let go of what is hurting you. And so uh, the, the highest form of maturity and masculinity is in the intersection of accountability and vulnerability with change behavior. When the kid in us makes a decision to grow up, 
the king will always show up. 